Well, hello, folks. Here we are again with another teeny tiny tech. Well, actually, it's not a technical tutorial. Well, it's semi technical. Friend and I oh, were having a discussion about uh, our prior military service, and uh, somehow the uh, subject of food came up. And we were talking about how I, we really liked the SOS, and so he described his SOS. He was uh, he was in the army. I was in the air force, and he was uh, describing what I really understood as uh, chip beef on toast. And I said, well, that's not SOS. SOS is actually a creamed hamburger with a bit of uh, sausage in it on, on a biscuit. Or, you know, you could have it on a piece of toast. That's the shingle part of the SOS. Um, and, and that led over to uh, cream tuna. I said, well, how do you make your cream tuna? I said, well, no, you really have to make crunchy cream tuna on biscuits, not cream tuna on toast. So. Um, I decided to see what kind of variations there were on this uh, cream tuna, so I looked up a whole bunch of videos on YouTube and discovered that uh, I've been doing it uh, a little differently than an awful lot of other people do. Some similarities, of course, there's uh, tuna, that's the similarity. So I thought I'd show you how to, uh, I do mine. It's uh, a little off from what we usually do on our channel here, but uh, as uh, we've said, a number of times before if it's kind of interesting we'll mess around with it well I I'm gonna mess around with a little bit of crunchy cream tuna on biscuits so let's see if I can get this to change over here boink uh, first you need some uh, fixins some makings and um, that requires of course tuna fish over here and I have no clue how much of anything you're supposed to use because I don't measure much of anything I just kind of wing it so I get a great big can of tuna in water, um, the best you can get, albacore, solid white. And um, just about everybody I saw in the videos used peas, but I also use corn. And then a couple of secret ingredients, which uh, appears no one else uses, which is uh, little sweet uh, pickles, little gherkins, and some uh, regular olives. Um, Plus three hard-boiled eggs. Uh, I use this little timer thingy down here. It uh, it heats up and uh, color changes over here, and it tells me when they're hard-boiled. Because I don't have a clue how long you're supposed to boil an egg to make it a hard-boiled egg. So I just watch those things over there. And then over here is another secret ingredient, which I've never seen anybody use. Uh, pure vanilla, a little bit of that. Um, I used to make my own biscuits. I don't do that anymore. I just buy these because they're really fluffy, easy to do. It only takes 15 minutes. And then you're, you'll need some butter if you want to follow this uh, kind of off-the-cuff uh, recipe I'm giving you now. Usually about a quarter stick or so. And then this, I've noticed no, uh, no one uses this. They all use flour. I prefer cornstarch. So there you go that's a that's about what you'll need plus a, some milk of course uh, i'll get to that in just a minute and a number of people have asked me over the years you don't seem to put salt or pepper in anything and my answer is you bet i don't there's enough salt in everything that i don't need to put it on anything uh, if you want salt and pepper stick it on after i've done making this gourmet treat um, as a matter of fact i've been accused, I've accused many times of having a very english taste uh, being of an English background way way back and I said well that's because I am very um, uh, I have a very acute uh, taste I can tell you when there's stuff in things uh, and I, I've been accused of saying well that's ridiculous you can't tell well out here in Southern California we have lots and lots of Mexican food and I can tell you for an absolute certainty because I've done it many times before if you put one stinky little piece of cilantro in a burrito I can tell you that it's there because it tastes just like soap um, and everybody says no it doesn't no it doesn't well it does to me and I can tell you when you do that so kind of gets back to the salt there's so much salt in all prepared foods there's a lot of salt in this unless you buy uh, unsalted so that's where the salt comes from I never use it uh, in in anything maybe you do that's okay but I don't so, making the mixins here. First thing I do is uh, throw about a quarter stick of butter in here, or a big uh, heap and helping out of one of those little scoopy things, and then uh, take about three large tablespoons of uh, cornstarch, throw it in there, and melt it all together. Then I start putting a little bit of milk in, right, low flame. 
then I take about oh a half a teaspoon or so of vanilla kind of a little bleep like that and throw it in there now a lot of people have said why in the world do you do that well it gives you this little bit of subtlety which at least I can detect certainly if I can detect a piece of cilantro I can certainly detect if there's some vanilla in there uh, very English taste eh? Mm. I don't know who cares so uh, I've got this uh, mixture going, which I think they call a roux. I think that's it. I don't know. I'm not, not a cook, so I just know how to do this. So uh, then you can take your uh, tuna fish, uh, which I use uh, the white albacore solid chunk in water, and break it up and kind of stir it around in there. That gets you started so that you can uh, go back and uh, mess with it because that's what I do is I take a little bit of cornstarch throw it in a cup and a little bit of milk mix it all up with a fork and toss it in there and then stir it around to see if it's going to come up to the right consistency and I keep doing that because I make a big batch of this so it lasts a couple of days um, so I keep going back and forth a little bit of this and that mixed together toss it in a little bit of this and that mixed together toss it in and I keep doing that until I get the volume up and the consistency up uh, where I want it so that I have enough for a couple of days and uh, when I get finished here at this uh, stage it's kind of uh, spoonable but gloppy that's that's the technical you know uh, gourmet cooking uh, terminology spoonable but gloppy um, kind of like a very loose mayonnaise so once I've got it up to about that point then I can start on my zippy dippy whiz bang biscuits uh, it takes about 18 minutes according to the instructions so I throw them on top of a piece of aluminum foil so of course I don't have to clean the pan and throw those in the oven uh, 350 at uh, 15 minutes at least that's what the instructions say and I always follow instructions then I can start working on the gherkins. Uh, chop up about six of those little dudes. Um, make a little pile of them right there. And then I do the same thing to the olives and like that. Take those two little piles and throw them in on top of the uh, goopy goopy stuff in the pan. Then I take a can of peas which I drain out and um, I'll throw those in. In this case I did not drain the um, corn uh, because the, the mixture was a little thick so I just tossed the whole can in there and the the water that this thing is packed in kind of uh, loosened up the mixture a little bit so because I have to keep messing with this to get it to the right consistency you know with the milk and the so on like that so I didn't drain the corn and that's where I get my salt from right there that's all I want then uh, you got to slice up a couple of cackle berries in my case I usually use three of them because I like to make a big heap and helping of this stuff throw those on the top and that makes this uh, incredibly wonderful looking gourmet goop uh, no it's not goop I'll bet you uh, three quarters of you that are listening to this have no clue why I put this up here or even what that means hmm. this is what happens when you get old you got lots of references that none of the young folks understand uh, and the reason I put that up there is this is so beautiful right so ready for my close-up mr. DeMille then I can put it on a, a nice plate. I didn't say a gourmet plate. Uh, this My wife puts these up on our um, breakfast table all the time. She always has a, a tablecloth and a, and a little thingy under here. I don't know what this is, like a little mat. And then a charger. I don't know why they call these chargers. Then a um, really nice plate. Well, I'm not allowed to put uh, my stuff on these really nice plates, but I do get to use the good paper plates rather than the cheapy little flimsy ones. So so here it is on my good paper plate right here. It's really wonderful because I have my hard-boiled eggs. Um, I got my little olives right there, little pickles, corn, green beans, tuna fish. It's really wonderful. I really like this stuff. This is how much my wife uses right here. And, and no, that is not blood. Um, you know, she doesn't particularly like this, but she's never threatened me with violence. So this is not blood right here. This is actually a bit of cocktail sauce that fell off of the shrimp that she was eating that was off the side of this picture over here. That was her dinner, but she uh, uh, acquiesced to have a tiny little bit of my gourmet meal here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, when you... when. I I won't even go there. Mm -hmm. She may walk in and smack me in the side of the head. 
Okay, there we go. Thanks for watching. Bon appetit, mon frères. 10-4, Roger Rapid, Decky over and out.